All right, fig lovers, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today we're looking at rooting fig cuttings. And I wanna show you guys this new method I've tried. Actually, not just with fig trees, we've done some hydrangea, willow, dogwood, Saskatoon, or Juneberry, and also actually pomegranate. I've been seeing, generally now it's been eight weeks. I've been seeing really good success with this. I wanna talk about why. Um, and I wanna offer this method up to you guys as maybe an alternative, and I wanna give the pros and cons of this. As you can see, we have been rooting these cuttings in a larger bin, a larger pot. I have an abundance of cuttings this year, and these are 15 gallon pots. So rather than putting these abundance of cuttings in one gallon pots or their individual pots, maybe some people like to use trays. They uh, root them in little bins. They fill up the bin with soil. The cuttings start to do well, and then they transplant them out. Uh, I've done pre-rooting that way, where you actually put them in moist paper towels, put them in a plastic bag. You start to get the root primordia, the root formation. You transplant them out then at that point into one gallon pots. I think that method and those methods work great, but I like this one slightly more than that because what we're able to do is actually use some of this headspace here at the top of the pot. If you notice, we don't fill up the soil all the way to the top. There's about six to eight inches I filled the soil up to, stuck the cutting in there as far as I could, and then there's headspace at the top. And what that does is it creates a more humid environment. The soil is not being dried out and you kind of have a situation where the cuttings are actually in a place where, you know, they're, they're, they don't even need parafilm. Now, some of them obviously I think could have benefited from that. There's definitely some dieback on some of these, but it's been eight weeks and they have been inside of a really warm greenhouse. So I feel really good about this. Uh, this method actually was inspired by my friend Chip. He's the same method, uh, but he did it in a grow bag. <laughs> And I thought, if you're using a 15 gallon grow bag, you're not gonna see success because the cuttings are gonna dry out like that. And they did. Now I'm sure he has some success here and there, maybe some buds underneath the soil that are gonna come up from the soil, but the tops are gonna dry out real quick. And these did not. These actually did pretty darn good. And I'm really happy with the results. Now what that also does is that headspace, it keeps, like I said, it keeps the soil moist. And this is what I really like about the other method of propagating figs that I love so much, which is a hybrid of the fig pot method and the direct potting method. You can see I've been doing this a lot this year. We have about 840 of these one gallon pots. Each one of these pots has about one cutting in it. So that's a lot of rooting. And I absolutely love this method. We did it last year. Um, it was actually really warm in the greenhouse for these cuttings and they got toasted. But we're doing it outside now that it's May, we're past frost and um, the cuttings are gonna do great this year, I have no doubt. And it's because we're able to really use the same principles that we're using in the other method I just showed you in those large bins where we have actually one cutting in here and the plastic bag that goes over top of this is trapping in all the moisture that's in the soil. We pre-moisten the soil, we put the plastic bag over top, the cutting goes in, the tag goes in, and then we put the plastic over like this, seal it in a way, and that's gonna trap all the humidity. You can see it rising to the surface there. And that way we don't have to, within the first three to eight weeks, which is typically when it's the most crucial time for fig cuttings when you're rooting them. Because in that first three to eight weeks, maybe even really before that, if you don't have the right amount of soil moisture, you're not gonna see success. If you're, you don't see enough soil moisture, actually your cuttings are gonna dry out. If it's too much, which is probably the most common thing I see, your cuttings are gonna rot, they're gonna mold. Now it's hard to get the right soil moisture from the beginning, but I find that if you pre-moisten the soil and saturate it, um, and then let it drain out from the drainage holes, then you can add your plastic bag over top. You pretty much have it there perfect, especially if you use ProMix, but I've used other mediums as well, and I see similar results uh, just by pre-moistening the soil that way. So once you get your, like I said, your soil pre-moistened, um, then we put the plastic bag over top. But if you're gonna be then, and you're, if you're not doing that, you're gonna be adding moisture throughout that three to eight weeks because eventually the soil is gonna dry out and you're gonna have the urge to start watering your cuttings. When you start adding that water, 
people have a heavy hand, add too much water, the cuttings rot. So one way to alleviate that is to just completely avoid that and by using one of the two methods we're talking about today. Now, alternatively, you can, of course, water them, but weigh the water, weigh the pot, know exactly how much moisture needs to be in there based on weight and add the water based on weight so that you're not over watering it too much. I still think that's probably not the way to go. So if you can just give them that one water from the beginning and then not have to water them for eight whole weeks, you're gonna be way better off. Um, and so that's why we're seeing success. The, 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 um, the height of these pots is helping keep that moisture in. Haven't really had to water these pots at all. It did rain the other day now that they're outside, uh, but I'm not too afraid of that now that they've been in these pots for a long enough time. And so let's talk about a little bit of the positives and negatives of this really quickly. The one positive I see is that if you have a lot of cuttings, like we mentioned, you stick all the cuttings in one pot. Well, now you don't have to divide them up into all those one gallon pots I just showed you. And that way you know if they took or didn't. If they didn't take, well then you don't have to waste your time putting them in a one gallon pot. And you don't have all this leftover material, you've been doing all this rooting. And it's just simply easier if you have a lot more material this way. The one downside I find is if you have, you have to transplant. There's no way around it. Eventually these cuttings are gonna need to be transplanted into their own pots. And so they're gonna go in those one gallon pots eventually. That's gonna be a bunch of work for me at some point. But you know, something like this, where they're at this size here in this state, even at this point, I probably wouldn't do that. But the nice part about this, I can leave them in this bin for a long time so I don't have to transplant them when they're still really young and fragile. If they're young and fragile like this, transplanting is not gonna go well. I'm not gonna see good success on average with that. I wanna leave them in here and I can feed them in this pot. I can water them in this pot. Uh, I have, should have really no issues um, getting these cuttings more established before I separate them, put them in one gallon pots for like a week or two, and then I can even sell them or put them into five or three gallon size pots like you see over here, and our work is done. So that's it. That is, I think, the pros and cons, this little method. We talked a lot about rooting, so many tips. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please hit the subscribe button, hit that like button for me, and check out my blog, figboss.com. Catch you guys for the next one. Take care.